break. We are still on the French Revolution of 1789. You're with Jane Andrew on Standard High Online Teaching. European history today is our study, and we are specifically on the French Revolution. Don't forget our guiding question tonight. How did King Louis XVI lead to the outbreak of the 1789 French Revolution? If the question was, to what extent was King Louis XVI responsible, or how far, it then would have been a different question that would require us to look at King Louis XVI vis-a-vis -vis other contributory factors in the outbreak of the French Revolution. Then we shall at a later stage go into essay writing and essay formation. But at least for today, let us just look at the weaknesses of King Louis XVI. We ended at a point where King Louis signed unfair commercial treaty with Britain in 1786. When King Louis signed this unfair commercial treaty, why did he have to sign this commercial treaty? King Louis realized that among the other countries, he needed close relations with Britain. After all, don't forget, Britain was the workshop of Europe. Britain was the most industrialized country. He needed reconciliation because in this 1776 American War of Independence, France allied with America against the British. So there is no way France would have existed without close relations with the British. So Louis XVI quickly realized the importance of reconciling with Britain and for that matter entered into uncalculated commercial treaty. In this treaty, Britain was supposed to supply half-finished goods to France. Moreover, at reduced subsidized costs or fee. But one thing you should be able to note, that goods from Britain were of a better quality, were far much better than goods manufactured locally in France. So when goods from Britain began flooding the French market, very many French masses shifted away from locally manufactured goods to goods from Britain, which were even more expensive, but in France sold slightly ch uh, cheaply compared to goods made, uh, manufactured in France. Now, this caused several financial and economic problems to especially the businesses and the industries of the middle class members in France. Many industries closed because they were now outcompeted. French masses were now resorting to goods from Britain. Middle class members were now out of business. So in 1789, given the accumulated misery, the middle class members already had their grievances. Their money had been loaned to the government of King Louis to finance the American War of Independence. It had never been paid back. Now, unfair commercial treaty has been signed, which all seem to be suffocating the businesses of middle class members in 1789. The only option was to rise up in order to defend the interests of the middle class members. We blame King Louis that he did not calculate. This was not necessary because it was only posing stiff competition which the middle class members were not ready to accept. Then the other thing we blame King Louis, that he lacked control of the army. He actually promoted the interest or he failed to be in full control of the army. One thing should be noted by listeners and all those who enjoy history, a country's prosperity, a country's might is largely measured on the discipline, the integrity and loyalty of the army. In the French society, by 1789, King Louis XVI had lost control over the army. Why? He passed unfair laws in the army. Step number one, that made him lose control of the army. He passed unfair laws in the army. Which unfair laws? One, all the higher ranks in the army were meant for the nobles. That is, a son of a noble would become a colonel at an age of 16. You can imagine, at 16 years, because you're a son of a noble, you are already a colonel. He didn't stop there. All higher ranks were purely reserved for the nobles. Even when within the army, we had some peasants that had forcefully been con uh, recruited or forced conscription in the army. May fat salaries were still for a given category of people in the army. That he didn't stop there. He even authorized all the senior soldiers to seldomly punish the juniors using the flaps of the swords 
assuming this is the sword with my simplifying art. Those were very common back in the days. Now, you find all those senior soldiers had swords just like the people have pistols. Now, you give authority to all the seniors to punish the juniors using these swords. That threatened the lives of the juniors. This was unacceptable. Remember, the juniors were the peasants who had been recruited in the army. Firstly, so in 1789, because even within the army, there was a section of disgruntled people, grieved people, when the revolution broke out. Instead of the army suppressing the revolution, it instead fraternized with the demonstrators. That explains why the simple demonstration escalated into a bitter riot. The other thing, King Louis, King Louis failed to suppress or to abolish the publications of the critical thinkers. He failed to cause control of the press. As any sensitive leader listening out there, the most sensitive thing you should control or guard against the flow of information to the public. King Louis is one leader who left the press to publish whatever they so wished. At that time, we had great writers, great thinkers. We cannot forget encyclopedists. We cannot forget the philosophers. Case in point, we had Voltaire, Montesquieu, Jean-Jacques Rougeau. These were great men of the time who wrote very many pamphlets, very many magazines that were all criticizing French society. They attacked the Catholic Church and how it conducted its work. They criticized the democracy that was lacking, the parliament that was lacking in the French society. And they did not only criticize, they were calling upon the French masses to wake up and fight for their rights. It should be noted that even by 1789, most of the philosophers, if not all, had already passed on. But their messages, their writings, were still causing a lot of sense in the French masses. Because in whatever they wrote, they called upon the French masses to wake up and fight for their rights. In their writings, they caused comparison between the French political system and the political system of Britain. And you would really see a very big difference. So it were these writings that gradually entered the minds of the French masses and prepared them for an uprising in 1789. We are still blaming King Louis. He was a dictator. And that reigned, that completely increased the unpopularity of the ancient regime. Remember, by the time he came to power, already the French ancient regime was unpopular. I told you it was called the ancient regime because the French masses were tired of this government. It had ruled for so many years. So King Louis seemed to have been the hope for the French masses, only to prove to be the worst dictator. He did not have a constitution. France, it should be remembered, did not have a clear constitution. Each province had its own laws governing. Laws were contradicting and moreover in foreign language. One would only become, would only know that you have broken the law when you're already a victim. Each region, each area had its own laws. King Louis did not have a parliament. You can imagine. The only parliament that we last had in France was in 1614. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about 1789. For a period of 175 years, there was no parliament in France. And King Louis ruled it that way. He saw it fit, and that is how he ruled. He overassumed the powers in his hands, and he would often say, I am the law, and the law is myself. The state is me, and I'm the state. That was the king. That is how arrogant he was. So he governed the French masses according to his wishes. As if that was not enough, King Louis oftenly issued warrant of arrest Reta de Cachet, call it warrant of arrest. And French masses would be arrested. You arrested without trial, imprisoned without trial. Many were sent to the most notorious prison on this planet, and the most notorious prison we have ever had. That was Bastille Prison. 
That is where many French masses were arrested. Moreover, very innocent French masses. Don't forget, majority. That we, as we plan to wind up, once King Louis, we still blame him. He failed to abolish social classes in the French society. This was a time bomb. It should be noted that in France, we had several social classes. We had the clergy. We shall maybe later break this. We had the nobles. We had the peasants. And even the middle class, all these were in one class, called the third class, or the third estate, we can call it a class, or estate. We had the clergy within this group, we had the bishops, archbishops, the royalists, these constituted the first class, or the first estate. Then we had the nobles, which was further broken into the higher nobles, the lesser nobles, the nobility of the robe, this constituted the second class. But it should be noted, for so many years in the French society, the first two classes, or the first estate and the second estate, these were the most privileged classes in the French society, surrounded with excessive privileges. And these oppressed and exploited the peasants and the middle class. Don't forget, the peasants constituted the majority in the French society. These first two classes only made up like 30% of the French population. The other, this other third class that had the peasants and the middle class, maybe to throw more light, the middle class were more educated. Within this class, we had all the professionals, the lawyers, the doctors, the engineers, the teachers, but who did not have any role in the French government, despite their levels of education. They did not have any relation to the royal family, but this was equally an independent class that was denied freedom of political participation. They were denied privileges, even when it was the industrial heart, the center of the French economy. Now, with continuous oppression and exploitation, the peasants by 1789, together with the middle class, realized the need to transform the French society. There were so many grievances, so many oppressions as that surrounded the classes, but this can constitute an independent discussion. We are only blaming King Louis that as a leader, he would have leveled the ground, he would have balanced the boat. But this remained a thorn in the French society that in 1789, the middle class members mobilized, they inspired the peasants to lead a revolution. Then the other mistake, finally, King Louis is blamed for marrying an Austrian woman. One would ask himself or herself, is marrying a woman a problem? If there is anything that increased the unpopularity of the Bourbon monarchy, if there is anything that straight away swept away the popularity of King Louis XVI, was the blunder of marrying an Austrian woman in the names of Marie Antoinette. Let us ask ourselves a few questions. What was wrong with Marie Antoinette? She's remembered as the most beautiful woman from the Austrian royal family of Maria Theresa. Austria, her country of origin, Austria itself was an enemy country, enemy number one country of France. Why? How? Because Austria had allied with Britain and they had defeated France in a war that was fought way back in 1756, where France lost her territories of Canada and India. This made Austria an enemy country. Now, King Louis makes a blunder of marrying a woman from an enemy country. That would not have been the biggest problem, but the quality and the nature of the married woman. Marie Antoinette, despite her beauty, history celebrates her as the most hopeless the most dense woman, this would sound an abuse, but that is the description given to Marie Antoinette, who did not have any love for the French masses. And she continuously ill-advised King Louis on a number of sensitive issues. She was the most extravagant woman. 
At one point, I'll come back purposely to discuss the weaknesses of Marie Antoinette. But I'm only summarizing it by saying in the interest of time. She was very extravagant, and her extravagance drove the French monarchy into financial tatters. Still, she ill advised King Louis, especially on the issues concerning financial reforms that they were expelled because of Marie Antoinette. Still, her reckless response to the cries of the French masses, especially when she made this statement that still cuts across all writings to the French masses that if they couldn't afford bread, then it was better to buy cakes at a time when France was suffering from famine, where bread, the staple food, was extremely expensive. And she made such a reckless statement, such a careless statement. So that alone only increased unpopularity of the monarchy and King Louis XVI in particular, and it cultivated the fertile ground for the uprising in 1789. Thank you so much for listening and listening to Cheyune Andrew. Stay tuned, follow us on our online teaching. This is Standard High School, Zana. Thank you. <laughs>